Until recently, these swamp monkeys were living in the forests of the Congo in Central Africa. Now they're in captivity in American zoos, described by the zoos as animals rescued from the bushmeat trade. Some species are indeed endangered by the bushmeat trade, in which anything that lives in the bush is considered food by the local people. But the real story of these monkeys is far less romantic. The monkeys were probably caught in the wild to order after a naive conservationist at San Diego Zoo was put in contact with a South African zoo owner who's also a dealer in wild animals. Are you interested in primates? Yes. I have... You can you, uh, uh, I have the biggest yeah. shipment of primates that come out of the Congo that has ever come out of the Congo. Swiss nature photographer Carl Amann has become concerned with this very negative aspect of the trade in endangered animal species. He sees most monkey exports as purely commercial transactions, not related to conservation, and creating unnecessary pressure on populations in the wild. The issue of exporting primates from Congo to the United States is a serious one in the context of how these animals were collected in the Congo. There is no way that under the Congo law they could have been legally collected. The only way to get your hands on baby primates of these numbers is by shooting the mothers, exporting the babies. Uh, and that is illegal even for CITES two animals. So they shouldn't have been exported to South Africa, they shouldn't have been imported into South Africa, they shouldn't have been exported from South Africa to the US. In the Congo, it's common to find monkeys being kept as pets. You can see them sitting by the roadside or near houses, often on a very short rope. Animals are also caught in the wild and brought to cities and villages to be sold. This always begins with the parents being killed to make capturing the young animals easier. As a result, there is tremendous pressure on the wild monkey populations, causing some species to be threatened with extinction. In the Congo capital Kinshasa, you can find dealers everywhere. Literally everything is for sale. How much is a chimpanzee? A chimpanzee costs three hundred dollars. Can I take a chimpanzee tomorrow? No, that's too quick. To get some answers, we went to Pretoria in South Africa to meet with animal dealer Mike Bester. We talked to Bester with a hidden camera. To get the ball rolling, we tell Bester we own a small zoo in Western Europe and we're interested in his animals. You know the PESAB, that's the African Association of Zoos? Yes. I sit on the board. OK. Uh, I'm on the board. We have seven board members. I'm one of them. OK. So that's very... So well, I'm... Highly zoo. responsible. Well, exactly. And the, and the authorities, when they have any zoo problems, they actually come to us. OK. This is a good combination. So you're a zoo and broker at the same time. Correct. This is the primates. What a good card here. Yeah. Also sold already? Yeah. The ones I'm showing you now are going to, uh, to, to San Diego Zoo in America. These are sold, but I have some that aren't sold. These were 80,000 rand a pair. Yeah, that's how many euros? That's 1,000. So uh, 10,000. 10,000 euros. Yeah. yeah. People bought them very, very quickly. Yeah. Because it's all new bloodlines. It's all out of the wild. Everyone. Everyone is out of the wild from the bushmeat markets. We had to build a quarantine station in the Congo, and that's not easy. We had to get the land, we had to get all the materials, we had to build a quarantine station. So now we go looking for the Congolese seller who sold the monkeys to Mike Bester. Kinshasa is a heavily populated city with millions of inhabitants. The centre looks very western, with skyscrapers and office complexes. But those who leave the centre and go to the outskirts of the city see a totally different picture. It's not safe to hang around with a hidden camera in a country like Congo. If you're discovered in an area like this, you'll be in deep trouble, and that's an understatement. 
Everywhere in the local markets, you can see smoked monkey meat. Every animal is eaten, but monkey meat is the most prized in the Congolese kitchen. A smoked monkey costs about $9 here at the market, but a bit further along, we're offered a live monkey for $150. <laughs> By asking around, we soon find Alex Bajangi, the animal trader who deals with Mike Bester. Once again, we act as interested buyers and quickly we hear the story about the large monkey sale to Mike Bester. I export to South Africa. How much? A hundred, fifty pairs. My customers are from South Africa. This monkey's going to the USA for 400,000. 400,000 for 10. A black mangabe I sell for 3,500. My price okay? The de Brazza monkey I sell for 3,000. My price, okay? I'm from South Africa. I find the buyers from the USA. Only 10, not all the stock. I send it out discreetly. I only sell 10 for 400,000. We're going to an ape holding facility owned by Madame Reefy. At about 20 cages, different sorts of primates are waiting for buyers. Madame Reefy endeavors to persuade us that the export of monkeys from Congo is forbidden. Papers for the parrots? No, for the monkeys. Apes may not be exported, that's forbidden. That's completely different. Oh. An export license is not that easy to get. Later on, we're introduced to Martin Bayer, one of the trading partners of Mike Bester in South Africa. You also sell uh, monkeys? Yeah, I have put the monkey, yeah. You also export before? Yeah, I export before, I export the monkey to South Africa last, last year. What did you export? What? What monkey you export? I export the brother, wolf monkey, uh, red kinon, 100,000 US dollar. For 33 monkey, 100,000. It's a lot of money. Yeah, it's a lot They write on the paper, newspaper, that monkey makes noise everywhere because that meant the ship. Send that monkey to, to America for 400,000. Okay, see you tomorrow. We have a situation where over 100 primates were exported from Congo to South Africa. Some 34 of them went to the United States. A selected group of pretty selected primates. To me, that's a clear indicator that this was an order, a very specific order from a very specific zoo facility who needed certain animals to a specific dealer who they knew who could get these animals, who then went to a dealer in Kinshasa, who then got people to go out and get these primates with, based on a very specific order. The monkeys were firstly transported from Kinshasa to Mike Bester in Pretoria in South Africa. In January 2006, Bester sent a price list round to his business contacts, where he offered the same kind of monkeys to the highest bidder. For example, De Brazza monkeys and Allen Swamp monkeys were listed. Mike Bester is a registered animal dealer and sells exotic animals all over the world. Uh, seven elephants, four white rhino, uh, 4.2 cheetah, and those birds going to America. Uh, this is for animals for Taiwan. Here's the permits for uh, primates to go to Czechoslovakia. Uh, this is all the monkeys going to America. Six American zoos bought 33 of Mike Bester's wild apes for $440,000 to strengthen the genetic population in their zoos. The Congolese and South African authorities assisted with these transactions by saying that these monkeys were saved from the bushmeat market. At that time, the zoo's story was supported by the American press. But in fact, although on the South African export documents, 
the monkeys are still described using the letter W for caught in the wild. On the American import documents, animals were accidentally shown with a totally different status, C, for born in captivity. In this case, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife declares them as the source, C being captive bred, which they clearly were not, and everybody admits to that. Of course, there's a huge difference in exporting captive bred versus wild caught animals. Then uh, the country of origin is listed as ZA, which is South Africa. The country of origin is clearly DRC, and they were clearly imported into South Africa with the intent to re-export. Carla Mann wanted to know whether Martin Bayer, the animal dealer in Kinshasa, really had got all the necessary permits from the Congolese government. What about the capture permits and the permit d'origine? Aman travels to Kinshasa to find a Miss Bashiki. According to the trader Martin Bayer, she is the person who signed the export documents the previous year when she was the head of the scientific committee of the Congolese ministry responsible for nature conservation. I am sure that the institute has a record of everything and it seems that there was no export permit given. Aman is none the wiser about who signed the paperwork. Now he wants to speak to the current director of the Institute of Nature Conservation. The ICCN is part of the Congolese Ministry for Bush Matters and is the only government department that can make decisions about animal export. There were different numbers mentioned. There was talk of 30, but also of over 300 and other numbers. I'm certain that I didn't give any permits for the export of monkeys or primates either without my knowledge or being completely informed. It's not easy to find truth in this enormous land. The traders try to convince us that they have all the licenses, but those who are said to have officially signed the papers deny their involvement. Who is not telling the truth? It's difficult to find that out in the Congo. The government exists only on paper. People have to fend for themselves here to make sure they have money and food. And often the food, and therefore the money, are to be found in the bush. That's the way it works here. Aman decides to ask Mike Bester for an official reaction. Was the monkey export to the American zoos a commercial transaction or a noble deed to save the animals? The import permit comes first, so it doesn't say how many check out the permits. No, I, I think you know. The way I understand it, and you must you must remember, I've spoken to the guys that brought them in probably 40 or 50 times because when I started wanting the stuff for San Diego, I obviously had to check out everything from one side to the other, and they told me that they were buying African greys in the marketplace and then collecting them up at one guy's house, and they saw a lot of these beautiful coloured monkeys in the marketplace. And they started by buying up some of the monkeys, taking them to the dealer's place. And then uh, trying to find out what were the possibilities of importing them into here. And I believe that they were literally bought them, they bought the most colorful ones that they could find on the market, not knowing a thing when they started. That's how they explained it to me. We have a situation where over 100 primates were exported from Congo to South Africa. Some 34 of them went to the United States, a selected group of pretty selected primates. To me, that's a clear indicator that this was an order, a very specific order from a very specific zoo facility who needed certain animals to a specific dealer who they knew who could get these animals, who then went to a dealer in Kinshasa, who then got people to go out and get these primates with, based on a very specific order. To me, what was interesting is if, I mean, I've got uh, uh, Karen's correspondence here, was species that they did not have a sufficient gene pool in the States, they didn't take. Although they said they would love to have them because they don't, they decided that it was, it was absolutely pointless to take two or three of a species because uh, they had no genetic... Uh, uh, in the USA, they only took ones where there were 
fairly genetically stable groups in the states as new bloodlines. And that was clearly explained right from the beginning. I can show you correspondence on that as well. Mike Bester's monkey shipment is first flown from Johannesburg to Amsterdam on a KLM freight airplane. Here, the animals have two days rest in a holding station, and then they're flown on again, on board KLM, to San Francisco, with San Diego Zoo as the final destination. But in 1999, KLM stopped transporting wild animals, saying, We actually have three options, to start again with the transport of animals, to completely stop with the transport of animals, and another option is how we might have a middle ground, where we work only with certain parties who are known to be trustworthy. The last option, trustworthy partners, is the back door through which the Congolese monkeys can be transported to America. KLM does transport wild animals when they go from zoo to zoo. The dealer, Mike Bester, in South Africa, is legally the owner of a dealership and sits on board a zoo. KLM declined to respond on camera, but sent a written explanation of the transportation of monkeys. KLM accepts animals which are caught in the wild for transportation to and between accredited zoos. Mike Bester is an accredited zoo. KLM goes on to say, In recent years, we have accepted increased numbers of animals from Bester Birds and Animals and other accredited zoos. Bart Stace, a member of the European Parliament, has been active for months with this so-called bushmeat affair and has asked critical questions of the European Commission. I think KLM is playing a dubious role. I've sought clarification and I wrote them a letter and in each case KLM says they work with Mike Bester. I'll read a bit of their reply. They say literally to me, in recent years we've accepted increased numbers of animals from Bester Birds and Animal Zoo Park. An animal zoo park, from the Devilled Zoo Park and other parks Aza, and related zoos. KLM shouldn't be out there advertising themselves to be different from the rest, different from the bad guys by saying we don't do this kind of thing and then they do it and get listed as it. So it's hypocrisy and they should be exposed for it so they hopefully don't do it again. Either they take is signed down and say, okay, we are part of the lot of people who are exporting wild-called wildlife, or uh, they should not do it. Besides the confusion about the licenses and the documents of origin, there's also the matter of the necessary CITES documents. CITES regulates the trade in endangered flora and fauna in 171 countries, and the Congo is a signatory to this conservation agreement. The exported Congolese monkeys therefore fall under the protection of the CITES agreement and cannot be exported without relevant permission. However, it seems that something's gone wrong with the export of monkeys because this programme's written request for an interview with CITES was refused for the reason that CITES is in discussion with the Congolese authorities. The question of who exactly gave permission in the Congo remains unanswered. We've got our hands on documents which prove what CITES is. And even the CITES people themselves in Congo have their doubts about how it all works in Congo. There must always be scientific advice, for example, before removal is possible. Something happened in this case. We know of statements from people who say, look, we can't really check the Congo situation. Either because there's a war going on or there are uprisings, there's no democracy. It's a massive country. So it's not all that simple. There is no democracy, there is no democracy, it is an immense great land. So it is all not so simple. I do have uh, some animals here, but as primates always appear sad regardless of the side of the cage when you've got bars in between a camera and there, I'd prefer, I will certainly show them to you. I prefer to do it without a camera, please. Okay. It is, as we say here, putting the cat next to the milk. It's asking for trouble. Someone who's both a dealer and a zoo owner, they can cheat. So as a member of the European Parliament, I decided it was my job to put a parliamentary question down and to see how we can approach this matter from a legal perspective, against abuse of this sort. Let's be honest, this is a scandal. 
laat het ons toch ook maar uh, klaar en duidelijk zeggen tegen dit soort schandalen.